Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Jennifer McGuire and I appreciate you stopping by. So normally I do technique videos, but today I'm doing a card showcase. Basically, I had some fun, unique products that I wanted to put to use. So I created a few fun fold cards and pop-up feature examples. So I'm just gonna walk you through each of these and hopefully they'll inspire you to try something similar. I'm currently making a lot of cards for the Caring Hearts card drive, which is a card drive that collects cards for the elderly that are in nursing homes and distributes them. So I have some more holiday cards for you, but these designs could be used with non-holiday products too. If you're interested in the card drive, by the way, I'll have a link below. But let's go ahead and get started with this video, and I'm gonna start out with this first example here that has a fun fold-out feature. I'm using the Hero Arts Tri-Fold Edge Winter Pine dies. You could e use each of these dies separately on a card, but I'm going to use them together to create a fun fold-out feature. For this, I'm going to start with a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm taking the first winter die and putting it up as far as I can to the top of the card. I'll then tape it in place and run it through my die cut machine. Any die cut machine would work for this. This will end up being the back piece of our card. We'll have a little leftover piece. I encourage you to save that because you can use that to mask on another card for maybe doing an inked background. But for this card, I'm just using the larger piece. Next, I have a piece of cardstock that is four and a half inches wide. I'm going to hold these together with the right edges lined up. Now I'm going to take a pencil and put a mark on that solid piece on the back right where the die cutting ends on the first piece that we are holding on the front. So you see there's a little dot right there where the die cutting ends. This will allow me to figure out where to line up our next die. So now I'm going to take the second die, this one kind of slopes down to the right, and I'm lining up the left edge of the die with that pencil mark. So you see it's lined up there with that pencil mark. I'll tape this in place temporarily and run it through my die cut machine. This will be the second panel for our card. Remember, this one's a quarter of an inch wider than our back, that's so that we can adhere them together. And I'll show you that in a moment. So now that little bit over here by the pencil mark, I'm just gonna cut that straight across. Okay, now for the third piece. This time I'm going to cut it to be four and three quarter inches wide. There are a few ways to do this, but I found this to be the easiest. So that's four and three quarter inches wide. I'm taking the last piece we die cut and lining it up with the left edge. See how it's lined up on the left edge and the right edge is a little bit bigger. I'm again doing a little pencil mark where the die cutting from our top piece ends. And now we will line up our third die, which slopes down to the left, with that pencil mark. So the right edge of the die lines up with the pencil mark that we just did. I'll tape that in place and run it through our die cut machine. Now these sizes seem a little weird, but when you see what I do next, it'll all come together. It's just what you need to do to create this fun fold card. After die cutting that, I'll just use my scissors to cut that extra little bit by the pencil mark, and we're ready to score. Using my scoring board, I'm going to score a quarter of an inch from the edge of both of our flat pieces. So remember how there's that little quarter inch that's hanging off where our pencil mark was? I'm going to score right there, it's at a quarter of an inch and then I can fold that over to create a tiny little flap on that edge. So I hope it's kind of making a little more sense now why we had that extra half inch each, or quarter inch each time. Okay, so now on our other flap piece, on that edge where that pencil mark was, I'm again going to score, that's a quarter of an inch in, and then I'll fold along that score line and we have a little flap on this. These little flaps will allow us to adhere to our background piece and create those fun fold openings. Now I do wanna trim that little flap. See how part of that flap is sticking out there? I'm gonna trim that down at a diagonal so that it's hidden behind the slope. And I'll go ahead and do that on the other piece too, just to clean it up and have it look nice. Okay, now on these little flaps, I'm going to put some strong adhesive. So on that, I have the flap folded down and on the flap, I'm putting some Gina K Connect liquid adhesive. You could use double-sided tape for this if you prefer. And I'm putting it up to the right-hand edge of our other die-cut piece, the other one that has a flap. 
So you'll see it adheres right up against it, and we have our two slopes connected together. Now, that other one has a flap also. So I'm going to take it, and this time, I'm going to unfold the flap. So see how I'm unfolding it? And then I'm going to put liquid adhesive on the inside of that flap. This time, I'm going to adhere it to the back of our background die cut piece. That way it's hidden when it's opened up. So there we can press that down. You wanna make sure that really holds nicely. And now we have this fun, unique, fun fold design. So it just opens up that way and we have a continuous slope of those fun trees. Now you could add this to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of solid cardstock in the background, but I thought a shaped card would be fun. Next, I wanted to add some coloring to the trees. Instead of taking the time to color with markers, I thought it'd be faster to ink. So I'm using pieces of tape to mask off the snow slope so that I only ink the trees. I'm pulling out my Tim Holtz Travel Glass Media Mat, which is just a smaller version of the mat that I normally work on. I thought it would be nice to have an area that would stay inky and I didn't have to clean it each time. So I have this that I can pull in when I need it and then remove when I don't. Using a blending brush, I am quickly applying Hero Art's Fresh Lawn Ink and also Field Green Zinc. You can see how easy it is to apply that color. I even came in with some emerald green ink for a little bit of blue tone. So once I have those trees done, I can move my mass over and go and ink up the rest of the trees. So I re reuse these pieces of tape over and over. The reason I decided to pull in that travel size media mat is because I didn't have to clean in between moving my mass around. There's a lot of white on this card and I didn't want to accidentally get ink where I didn't want it. And it just seemed faster to pull in that mat, do my inking there, and then keep this mat clean for moving things around and not having to worry about spreading that ink. So I went ahead and inked up all the trees and here we have this fun fold card. I did use a brown marker to color the trunks of any of the trees that had the trunk showing. I also decided to add a very simple sentiment to this, and I used this new Hero Arts Mountain of Joy stamp set. It's got this mountain of presents, but the sentiment that says sending you a mountain of joy, I thought fit nicely for this card too. So I put the card into my Misty stamping tool because I didn't want to mess it up at this point by messing up the sentiment, and I'm stamping that with black ink right onto one of the slopes. I decided to keep my card in the Misty so the magnet would hold it down while I added Lucy's card's rainbow sparkle jewels. So I just put a little bit of liquid glue around the openings, those little holes in the trees, so that I could put a gemstone on top. It did take a bit of time to add all those gemstones, but I definitely think it was worth it because you can see all that fun shine. So here's how the card opens. There's plenty of room to write a sentiment inside there, kind of towards the bottom or you can extend your message over to the left a bit too. The card stands up nicely and it fits perfectly into a normal size envelope. I wish you could see the fun colorful shine of those gems in real life. Now at this point I decided to go ahead and stamp something fun on the envelope, so I used the Hero Arts Snarky Christmas Messages stamp set. There's some fun playful sentiments in here and a few of them are great for the envelopes. So on this, I stamped, I spent a lot of time on this, I promise, which I just thought was fun. And there we have our envelope to match our card. I had so much fun with those dies that I decided to do another card, but this one opens a bit differently. So we have the two flaps that open out to the side. So you use the same dies, kind of the same technique, but I'll walk you through everything to show you how to create this fold instead. Once again, I'm starting with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white piece, and I have the first die all the way towards the top, and I'll run that through my die cut machine. Okay, so now I have another piece of white cardstock. This one is four and a half inches wide. I'll hold my die cut piece on top of it, and I have it pushed to the left, so the left edges line up, and I'm going to put that pencil mark at the end of the die cutting on the right. So you can see I've put it onto that white piece in the background. Now I'll take the second die, line up the right edge of the die with that pencil mark, and then I will run that through our die cut machine. If you don't have dies like this, you could instead cut a slope 
connecting those areas and then add little uh, little die cut trees or little critters to it. So you can make your own sloped card like this. For the third panel, I'm again starting with a four and a half inch wide piece. I'm going to actually line this up so that the back piece hangs off a quarter of an inch on the left and the front piece hangs off a quarter of an inch on the right. We're not measuring that, we're just kind of eyeballing it. Then I'll put a little pencil mark there where the die cutting ends on the left. So there you can see a closer look at it. Then we'll take that third die, connect the die on the left edge with the pencil mark and run it through our die cut machine. Okay, so now we have our three panels ready to go. All we need to do is add our score lines and then we can assemble the card. Now for this bottom piece, I'm just going to do a quarter inch from the edge score line. And that again is where that little pencil mark is that I created. So now we can fold that flap and we want to reinforce that nicely. And then we can move on to our second panel. Once again, we're going to do a quarter of an inch off the edge where that little pencil mark is, score it and fold it. So our last example was a little bit different. It had that pullout design, whereas this kind of has a gatefold design. So it's just two different options and I wanted to show you how to get more out of these products. To glue these together, I'm going to unfold the flaps and put adhesive on the inside. So I'm putting some adhesive right onto this flap and then I'll glue this to the back of our back die cut panel. We're gonna put another piece of cardstock back there that will hide these seams. Okay, so I really wanna press that in place because I wanna be sure that holds nicely. And then we're going to do the same to the other piece. I'm unfolding that little flap, putting adhesive on the inside of it, and gluing that to the back of our back die cut panel. So now we have our fun kind of gate fold, uneven card design. Now you could leave this as is, as I did in the last example where it's a shaped card, but I decided I wanted to have a colored background panel. This is four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm doing one of my favorite time-saving techniques. I wanted a colorful background, and I'm starting with colored cardstock. That way you don't have to blend two colors together. Instead, I started with Hero Arts Azalea Pink cardstock, and I just added some uh, grape soda ink from Hero Arts. So you can see it saves me a lot of time because I don't have to blend pink into purple. I just start with pink cardstock and add the purple. So now I'm using Hero Arts White Iridescent Shimmer Spray, and I'm going to just kind of tap some of this on so that we get kind of a scar starry night. And these will end up giving little white dots with some iridescent shimmer to it. Once I'm happy with the little dots, I can go ahead and heat set it so it dries. And now we can add this to the back of our card. However, I decided that that white, that's a lot of white on the bot bottom, I wanted to add something extra special to it. So I'm using a sponge dauber just to rub a little bit of Versamark ink along the edges of my trees. Not a lot, just a little bit. And then I'm going to add some sparkle embossing powder. Now this won't show up very much in my photos or in the video, but in real life, this is going to give a nice little like twinkling edge to our trees. Kind of looks like snow has settled on it. Little things like that don't take too long to do, but make a big impact in the final card. So I did that to all of the trees and now I'm putting glue on the back of this white piece and then gluing it on to the pink panel that we inked. I finished off the card by adding a sending piece sentiment from this Hero Arts home scene stamp set. I also put a few iridescent gemstones on the trees just for added sparkle. So here you can see the final result. This opens a bit different than our last example, but uses the same products. Remember, if you don't have dies like that, you can just cut your own slopes and add little die cut trees or little stamped images. Here's a closer look at that inked sky. I love how fast and easy that was to do. And I really think the pink and purple color is a nice change from the typical blues that I do for those night skies. Once again, I decided to go ahead and stamp on my matching envelope. So I use that same snarky Christmas messages stamp set. I thought this was really fun. Something playful that you could use not only for holiday envelopes, you could use this all year round. Okay, let's move on to a different type of card. In this case, I have this fun little house scene and the door opens up and allows you to see inside of the card. 
Now the card will open completely so you can write a message on the inside, but that door on the front adds a special bit of fun. For this, I used the new Hero Arts November My Monthly Hero Kit. Now this kit includes a large 6x8 stamp set, a large die, additional dies, coordinating dies, and then some accessories. The value of this is twice the cost. I think the cost is around $35 for all of this, which is really a bargain for everything that you get. I like that they all coordinate together nicely, but you can use them separately to get different styles of cards. I decided to use the large die along with the stamp set to create a fun scene. My card is pretty involved, but you could definitely do a simpler design if you want. After I show you my card, I also wanted to show you how you can use these products to create a fun gift bag, and I'll show you that soon too. So here's a look at the dies that are included in the set. I am going to use the little house scene that you see on the right and the little accessories that go to decorating that. So I have a little wreath, we have the plants, and we have a little envelope so that we can put in the mail slot. I have a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm cutting the house die from that. And check out that scene. It creates little notches that form the little brick pattern. So not all the pieces fall out, but you can see the pattern there. It's super cool. I'm gonna go ahead and fold along the door so that will open up easily. Next, I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. I'm going to hold my die cut piece on that and trace the doorway. I wanna make sure that you can see through the entire front of the card to the inside. So by tracing this doorway in here, I can take a rectangle die that's a little bit bigger than that run that through to my die cut machine and we'll have a window on the front of our card. I could have die cut the house directly on the front of the note card, but I wanted to give it a little more stability, so that's why I decided to do this. Now before we glue this together, I'm gonna to go ahead and add some color to that front panel. You can see here the little indentations or the little cuts that the die makes to create the pattern, but it doesn't actually cut the pieces out completely. It's a really cool effect. I also like this because I can use those lines as a guide for my coloring. I decided to use Copic markers because those are usually the quickest for me. However, as you'll see here, as I was coloring this door, I realized my BG72 marker is dry. I need to buy a refill. So I had to kind of play around with this and make it a little bit darker than I intended. The house that I used to live in had a door that color, so I really wanted that, but I ended up having to go darker. Sometimes you just gotta make things work. By the way, I put that tape down so I wouldn't have to stay in line as much. It really saved time. Now the window and light pieces actually cut com through completely so you can change them out. I'm just using a piece of tape to hold them as I add quick coloring to them and then we'll glue them back in place. Once I finished coloring the front, we can go ahead and put adhesive on the back of this and then add it to that note card where we die cut the rectangle from the front. Now I can go ahead and add some adhesive into those openings and inlay our little colored window panes. It goes in just like a puzzle piece. If you wanted to, you could just leave this entire die cut background white and add a little scene in the front of it. There are many ways you can use that house die. Okay, now it's time to do our stamping on the inside. So I have a piece of white cardstock in there that is four by five and a quarter, and that's what I'm gonna do my stamping on. So I stamped a little doggy first because I want him in the front. Then I stamped onto a post-it note, the same image, and I'm going to cut it out quickly to create a mask. I'll put that over my dog. Whatever image you want to be in the foreground, like all the way in the front, you want to stamp that first. Mask it and then stamp the other things. Next, I wanted the little staircase. I thought the staircase was fantastic and you could use it for other cards year round. After I stamped that, I made a little mask just for the left edge of the staircase because I wanted to stamp a tree to go behind that. Okay, one last thing, I can remove that staircase mask, but I did want a little rug for our dog to sit on just for a little splash of color down there. So I kept the dog mask on, stamped the rug, and there we have our fun little scene. And by the way, the reason I put another piece of white cardstock in there to stamp on was in case I messed it up, I didn't want to mess up the whole card. 
Okay, after coloring the inside with the same colors I used on the outside, I'm using Hero Arts enamel dots to decorate the wreath. I like these dots because they're not too thick, and there are three colors and three sizes in a pack. Once again, I decided to stamp a sentiment on the matching envelope, and I thought the sentiments on the Hero Arts May Your Home stamp set were perfect. There's even one that says, I adore you, which would be fun, but I decided to go with From Our House to Yours. So here's a look at the final card. I did add a few more details to it. I used a little silver gem for the doorknob. I tucked some die cut letters into that letter slot. I put shimmer from my aqua shimmer pen onto the lights and the window panes and also a bit of glossy accents. This was really fun to put together. Lila did one too. I'll have to share it over on Instagram. But I love how you can open that little door to see the scene inside. Yet the card does open like a regular card, and you can write your sentiment towards the top. Before we move on to another card example, I wanted to show you another way that you could use the dies from this kit. I didn't have time to pull a full example together, but I wanted to give you an idea of how it would work. What we'll end up with is a unique house-shaped gift bag. For this, you need two note cards that are top folding, four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to cut three and a half inches off of one of the flaps on each of the cards. Now this is going to form the sides of our little house gift bag. So those two little flaps that we have that are two inches there, I'm going to put adhesive onto one of those, and then I'm going to glue it to the other two inch flap. So you can see the walls of our bag starting to form. Also included in that Hero Arts kit is a roof die, and I die cut that twice, and we'll glue that to the top of our bag. Now you could do these in different color pieces, you could add color to them, I'm just using white cardstock to quickly show you this example. Next you need some sort of bag to hold your presents or your little goodies. There are glassine bags I think included in the kit, I didn't have them, so instead I just wanted to show you this clear bag as an example, but pretend there's things inside of it. I'm just going to hold the top of the bag at the top flaps so it's sandwiched between the top flaps. And then I'm going to use a stapler to staple here. You could use adhesive if you prefer, but I feel like a staple is quick and easy. Now we can glue the house die cut to the front of this, and you have what looks like a fun house gift bag. And it has a little handle thanks to that roof die. If you wanted, you could fill in the roof, roof with a piece of white cardstock, but I like that you're actually able to hold it here. So this would be fun to put little treats in to give as a gift, or put a gift inside itself. So that's just another way you can use those dies. Okay, I have a final example for you today, and this is a very quick shadow box card. Now, shadow box cards are usually very elaborate and take time to make. This one is super fast, and I wanted to show this option. So for this, I'm starting with two pieces of cardstock. These are four and a quarter by five and three quarters. This is the beautiful Hero Arts Blue Lapis cardstock, which I just love. It's such a gorgeous color. I'm going to do two score lines in each, one at a quarter inch and one at one inch from the edge. So there's a quarter inch and an inch, and I'll do that to the other one too. So they'll be the exact same size and score lines in the exact same place. So after I've scored, I can go ahead and fold along the score lines, and you'll end up with two pieces that are cut and folded the same. These will go together nicely to form a pop-up box. So this will flatten nicely when it's in the envelope, but when it comes out, it pops up to create a shadow box. I'll take one of these panels and make it the front of our card. I'm going to flatten it out, and then take a window die to die cut from the center. This is the Hero Arts Decorated Window Branches window die. It does come with the large oval, but I'm only going to use the window die itself. I'm going to place it right on the front of our card and put some tape there to hold it in place and run it through our die cut machine. Now I want to add some inking to our background. And to be honest, I should have done this before I did the die cutting, but I didn't think about it. So I'm just taping uh, the pieces in place so they don't move while I ink it, just so that I don't end up, you know, kind of messing up the little delicate pieces. But if you make this card, ink it first before die cutting. Now I'm using a blending brush and Hero Arts Navy ink to add some dark color towards the bottom. That's a huge time saver. 
Next, I'm using Sukuneko Shimmer Spritz and spraying over the entire piece and also adding some little splatter with the Hero Arts Iridescent White Shimmer Spray. After I'm done with that, I can go ahead and dry it off with a heat gun. And then we have the front panel inked and die cut. The last piece we need to prepare before we assemble is the white cardstock piece that says Merry Christmas on the inside. For this, I use this new die set from Hero Arts that includes everything you see on my work surface. I wanted to show you what that big die does. It folds up to create a gift card holder. I'm not using it for this example, but I wanted to show you what it looked like since that piece looks a little, that die looks a little confusing. So you can see it holds a gift card perfectly. But what I'm using is one of the sentiment dies. Now these dies don't actually cut out a sentiment. They make the cuts that allow you to read the sentiment. So there's Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas. I'll be using the Merry Christmas. So I have a piece of white cardstock that is four by four and a half that will fit nicely on the inside. And I'm going to take the Merry Christmas die and I want it to cut kind of in that opening. So I need to get my placement right. So I'm holding the white cardstock behind that front window and I'm going to trace through that opening there. That's where I want to make sure I use the Merry Christmas die. So I just trace that with the pencil. Now here's that Merry Christmas die. Remember this won't cut out a word, but instead make little cuts to form the word. Now I just run that through my die cut machine as I would a regular die. And now I'm erasing my pencil lines. I like to use my detailer tool for this. It erases it very quickly and I don't accidentally damage the details of my cardstock. We have all of our pieces ready, so it's now time to assemble. I'm going to unfold the flaps of the front of our card, put adhesive on the flap. You want something strong, a strong liquid adhesive or tape, and I'll place this on the bottom of our back piece. You wanna make sure that lines up nicely. Then we'll put adhesive on the other flap and connect it to the top of our front piece. So basically we're forming a little shadow box. And because the dimensions that I used of our cardstock, this will flatten and fit into a regular envelope perfectly. Now I put adhesive on the back of our white panel and I'm sliding that in there and adhering that into place too. I put this into a silver envelope just to match the shine of the card. And there you can see how the card pops up. It'll stand up nicely with no problem. And it's a super simple uh, shadow box card. I've done many different shadow box cards in the past, and I'll link to a few of those below in my description. For a place to write a personal sentiment, I put a piece of white cardstock on the back. So there you can see a very quick to make uh, shadow box card, but it has some fun to it thanks to that sparkle that we added and that sentiment in the inside that looks like it's engraved. I'll revisit this simple shadow box card design again in the future and show how to add a little bit to it, kind of step it up a bit if you're interested. Okay, so there you have a card showcase just showing some fun fold card designs. I hope you'll give these a try. I do have all the videos and supplies that I talked about in this video linked below in my YouTube description. But if you go to my blog, you'll find a whole lot more information. And I'll link to that up here on the top right. Thank you so much for spending this time with me here today. I hope you have a good week and we'll see you soon.